Welcome to Movimod and Field Distributors Basic and Intermediate Training. This is session six. We're now transitioning from working with easy mode to the more sophisticated expert mode. This is an alternative mode that Movimod has that allows you to really unlock its full potential. In our last session, we got ourselves ready to work with expert mode by exploring the parameter tree, which you access through MoviTools Motion Studio when you're connected to your MoviMod by a PC. We're now going to expand upon what we learned and do a lot more with the MoviMod, so let's get started. Although I introduced you to the parameter tree in the last session, I want to talk about it a little more formally this time because we're going to be doing a lot more with it. So let me first of all introduce this topic by explaining how to understand parameters. When you work with the parameter tree, you will frequently be told by various people or pieces of documentation to change or modify certain parameters. You need to understand what they're saying or what that documentation is pointing you to. Let's take a look at a typical parameter. MoviMod has seven major parameter groups, numbered 0 through 8. There are some missing numbers in that range. In other SEW EuroDrive products, some of those numbers are present, but they are not present with MoviMod. Those numbers identify what is called the parameter's main group. So, for example, right here, set points and ramp generators is group number 1. Now, underneath that group will be additional groups and individual parameters. So the second digit is what's called the subgroup. For example, speed ramps are contained in subgroup number three, which is part of main group number one. That's why there's a one three in front of the description. Your third digit is the actual parameter number. For example, for ramp T11 up, the parameter number is zero. It happens to be the first parameter in that group. So each of the digits means this. The 1 means it's part of main group 1, the 3 means that it's part of subgroup 3, and 0 indicates it's parameter 0 within that main group and subgroup. So in other words, a parameter, or it's sometimes called a P number, is actually the letter P plus the main group number plus the subgroup number plus the parameter. That means that this parameter is parameter 130, or it's sometimes called P130. That's how parameters are identified. So if somebody tells you to go to a particular parameter, you should take the first digit, and that will point you to the group. The second will point you to the subgroup within that group, and the third will point you to the individual parameter. Not too complicated, pretty straightforward actually. Let me give you another very important note here. Whenever you're changing parameters, you must always hit enter after changing a parameter. So if you click a parameter, type in a number, you must hit enter. If you tab or click off the parameter to another parameter, the change you made will not stick. The parameter will revert to whatever its original setting was. So always hit enter. And that is true with almost all SEW EuroDrive software products. So that's something you can take to the bank. All right, well, it's time now to move into expert mode. Let's talk first of all about what expert mode is and what it can do for you. Expert mode unlocks the MoviMod and the motor's full potential. Now, that said, almost all of our customers typically use easy mode startup with MoviMods, but a small percentage of customers need that extra edge that expert mode gives, and that's why I'm going to explain how to use it because you can do a lot of things with expert mode that you cannot do with easy mode. In fact, many people don't realize MoviMods can do as much as they can do because they never go out of easy mode. So this is worthwhile at least for you to understand what is possible, even if you don't need it right now. All right, so what can you do with expert mode? Well, here are some of the features available. First of all, you have access to the full parameter tree. Now, in our last session, we examined some of the read-only parameters, which are perfectly accessible in easy mode. But almost all the other parameters, which are read-write parameters, could not be changed when you're in easy mode. So, we're going to now gain access to that full parameter tree. Secondly, you have multiple binary control modes available. In easy mode, you just have one, where you can select clockwise, counterclockwise, and then switch between the F1 and the F2 speeds. That is it. 
but Movimot actually has several binary control modes with different combinations of those binary inputs, and you can select those when you're in expert mode. You get precise speed set points. In easy mode, the speed set points depend upon the F1 and the F2 dials. And as you know, you can't always set those to exact speeds because the F2 dial clicks, so you have to just pick the nearest possible speed. And although the F1 dial turns smoothly, you have to sort of guess when you're setting it between digits. So if you want a specific speed, expert mode is really the way to go because you can key in an exact speed. For example, you could say you want your drive to run at 806 RPM, and it would try to do it if you put an 806 RPM in the right parameter. So that is another advantage, getting more precise speed control. There's also another mode where instead of two fixed speeds, F1 and F2, there are four instead. So there's a mode that gives you access to more fixed set points. Certain applications, maybe you need more than two speeds. The only way to do that is to go into expert mode or RS-45 mode, which we're not talking about here. You also get more control over your ramps. In easy mode, you basically have just a single ramp value, which you set with the T1 dial. That gives you the same up and down ramp times, the same acceleration and deceleration. Well, when you go into expert mode, you can have independent up and down ramps, and you can also alter the ramp's shape. If you don't know what that means, I'll be telling you about it later in this session, so just hold that thought. You have more control over the single digital output. Remember, that's a relay contact. In easy mode, the relay contact simply indicates whether the MoviMod is ready or not. But you can assign the relay to other status signals and use those instead. We'll be looking at those. You have motor adjustment parameters that allow you to tweak some of the expert motor parameters like its magnetization and various other things. Most people don't need to tweak those, but if you do, they're only available in expert mode. And I will be pointing you to them, although we won't be talking about them much. There are some additional VFD control modes beyond just VFC and VF. We'll be exploring those briefly. And then finally, you can control how the MoviMod handles fault situations. In easy mode, there's a default way that it handles problems, but you can configure the fault response much more deeply in expert mode. So lots of fun things to experiment with and to tweak in order for MoviMod to do exactly what you need it to do for your particular application. All right, how do you switch to expert mode? It's actually relatively simple. First of all, you need to be sure that your dip switch bank S2 switches 5 through 8 are set to all zeros. In other words, they have to be set to the basic functionality mode. You can't have them set to one of the alternative behaviors. If your MoviMot control head switches are set to an alternative behavior, you need to change them back to all zeros, all off, before you can switch to expert mode. Once you've done that and the control head's back in place and the MoviMot's powered up, Connect it up to your PC using one of the USB interfaces, get MoviTools Motion Studio started up, scan in as we showed you in the last session, and then go in the parameter tree to parameter 805. So go to main group 8, subgroup 0, individual parameter 5, and change that from easy to expert. And that's all you have to do to change to expert mode. Very simple and straightforward. Once you're in expert mode, you can selectively disable the MoviMot's mechanical controls, the dip switch banks, the F1 speed dial, the F2 speed dial, and the T1 ramp dial. However, be aware you don't have to disable every single mechanical control if you don't want to. You notice you have individual checkboxes here. So if you go to parameter 102, every checkbox that you check will disable one of the mechanical controls but every checkbox you leave unchecked will leave those controls enabled. So you can actually have a mixture of parameters and mechanical controls if you want. In most cases though, it's better just to disable all the mechanical controls because all of them have corresponding parameters that you can set. And this really just gives you maximum flexibility. Let me point something out here. When you're browsing the parameter tree, you'll notice that certain parameters have this little eye symbol next to them. 
If they have a symbol like that next to them, it means they can't be changed unless their corresponding mechanical control is disabled first. All of the parameters that have the I symbol in front of them are ones that were controlled by the mechanical controls. And so if you want them to behave like they did with the mechanical controls, you'll have to set them to a corresponding value. For example, these two parameters, 160 and 161, correspond to the two fixed set points that you get with the F1 and F2 speed dials. If you disable those, which you would do in parameter 102 by checking their checkbox, you could then go in and put in whatever speed you want in these two locations, and the drive would behave in exactly the same way. The advantage here, though, is that you would be able to key in an exact speed instead of just picking the closest thing you could find on the mechanical dials. So be aware of that relationship and look out for those little eye symbols. All right, now what we're going to do is take a look at the various parameters that are available. I'm not going to go over every single parameter because there are a lot of them, and many of them are very rarely used, only used for very specific situations, but I do want to cover some of the key parameters that you'll change a lot. So we're going to go over major groups and talk about the highlight parameters within them. Now before I do that, I'm going to give you a handy little tip for MobiTools Motion Studio. If you want to know what a parameter does in the parameter tree, just click on it and hit the F1 key, and that will give you a quick summary of what the parameter does. Basically a help screen, so be aware of that. All right, let's start with parameter group 1. Parameter group 1 includes ramps. Now this is nice because it gives you a lot more flexibility when it comes to how you speed up and slow down. Instead of having just that single ramp from the T1 dial, you now have different up and down ramps. Notice the I symbols next to these two parameters. You must have the T1 dial disabled to be able to change these, but you can key in independent times. Incidentally, you calculate the values you put in here using the same equation that I introduced several sessions ago. So you'll just need to calculate the appropriate times and then put those in. The advantage here is you'll get an exact ramp value instead of just the closest value that was available on the T1 dial. So this is kind of nice. However, you have something that wasn't available at all in easy mode, and that is a single up-down ramp where you can program in soft edges. Now, what do I mean by that? We sometimes call these ramps S-ramps because they're shaped like the letter S, and the picture shows you the difference. A standard ramp makes a sharp transition from one speed to another, but the soft ramp is curved. In other words, it accelerates and decelerates more gently. Soft ramps are usually used with applications where you want the acceleration to be a little more gradual and gentle. Maybe it's mechanically necessary. There's all kinds of reasons. But if you want to use a soft ramp, you can activate this feature. The way you do it is you change parameter 135 from off to one of the three levels of soft ramp, and then you set a numeric ramp time in parameter 134. Now, if you turn parameter 135 off, it will revert back to using the independent up-down ramps. But if you turn this on, it will switch to the single soft up-down ramp. So two choices available here. And then finally, you have something called a rapid stop ramp, which you can set to an independent value. We'll talk about what this ramp is used for later. I'll just give you a clue right now. It has to do with fault situations, but we'll cover it more thoroughly down the road. All right, so that's one thing you gain in parameter group one, lots more control over the ramps. Now you have your standard binary control mode set points, your F1 and F2 speeds. These are the equivalent to the values that you would set on the F1 and F2 speed dials, but you can program in exact numbers here. So if you just want to use exact numbers, but still standard binary mode, just set these parameters after disabling the mechanical controls and you're good to go. Direction will continue to be controlled by clockwise and counterclockwise digital inputs, and you can select between the two speeds with the F1, F2 digital input. However, since there are some alternative binary modes, there are also some alternative set points, specifically these. These are accessed from one of the alternative binary modes. Notice instead of two speed set points, you have four. They're called N0 through N3. And these allow you to have more speeds if the application requires them. 
You select between these by using the F1, F2 and counterclockwise digital inputs. What you do is you send a 2-bit binary number in through them, 00, 01, 10, and 11, and those four binary patterns will select between the four fixed set points N0 through N3. What that means, though, is you no longer have a direction-controlled digital input. So the direction is controlled by the sign that you associate with the set point. If the set point is positive, in other words, it has nothing in front of it, it will turn clockwise. And if you put a minus sign in front of it, it will turn counterclockwise. The clockwise digital input signal, by the way, starts and stops the motor. It's basically the enable-disable signal. We'll be covering that more, and I will demonstrate this mode since it is very handy. All right, parameter group three. This group includes parameters to set the minimum and maximum motor speed. It also includes a series of advanced motor properties and the anti-resonance feature, which we've talked about before. I'm not going to discuss these here because these are expert parameters, but I refer you to the manual if you think you require them. And then finally, there's motor thermal protection. And you can provide some additional information in parameter 341 where you can indicate how the motor's cooled. So these parameters tend to be fairly expert level. We aren't going to really discuss them here, but if you're curious about them, take a look at the Movimop manual. Moving on to parameter group 6, this allows you to configure the digital inputs. Remember the clockwise, counterclockwise, and F1, F2 digital inputs. There are only three on a standard Movimop. By default, these implement the standard binary control mode where you can select direction and between two speeds. So the first choice is standard binary mode, the one we experimented with in an earlier session. But notice there are some additional binary control modes. So you do have some alternatives here. I'm just going to talk about them briefly. Mode one is our standard one. We've already used that. Mode two gives us access to that larger group of set points. And as I explained there, the F1, F2 input and counterclockwise input provide the most significant and least significant bit of a binary number that selects between the four set points. The clockwise signal is run and stop. Mode three goes back to just two set points. F1, F2 selects between the two speeds. Clockwise enables or disables the drive but counterclockwise becomes an input for a fault sensor. This is an external device that is signaling the Movimod if something goes wrong. This is an alternative feature that you might need. For example, if you have a sensor that detects a jam in a material feed system, you might want to input this through the counterclockwise signal and it will trigger the Movimod. And if something goes wrong, the Movimod can then act on that, often by shutting down. You may be wondering why is there a slash in front of the word external fault? It indicates that this is what's called an active low digital input. In other words, if you want a signal that a fault has occurred, you have to provide a low signal, a low voltage close to ground level. And if you want to indicate that everything's fine, you must set it up around 24 volts. So this is kind of opposite the way the control signals that operate the motor behave. They normally are inactive when they're low, and active when they're up at 24 volts. Fault devices are almost always the opposite. That's a safety feature so that if something goes wrong, the wire gets cut, disconnected, or its power supply fails, it will create a fault situation, which usually puts the drive in a safer situation. There's also something else in parameter group six that's quite handy. You can assign the function of the digital output, in other words, the relay contact. Now, by default, it's assigned to the ready signal that simply indicates if the Movimod is ready to run. But you can assign it to other things, and you can see those here. We have various alternative choices. We have output stage on, so that would indicate that the output transistors have activated. Rotating field on indicates that the motor is starting to turn. Brake released indicates the brake has released the motor and allowed it to turn and brake applied indicates that the brake is closed and is trying to stop the motor. So you can assign any one of these to the digital output to the relay, and if that particular signal happens to be true, the relay will close. Alternatively, if you don't want the relay to do anything, you can assign it to no function. All right, parameter group seven. Parameter group seven has the additional motor control modes. 
You notice instead of just VF and VFC, there are now two VF modes and three VFCs. I'm going to refer you to the manual for most of these, but I will point out there is a VFC mode that can be used with hoists, vertical applications. I'm not going to explain how to set this up here because you have to set it up very carefully for it to be safe. The manual describes this in great detail. It explains the requirement for braking, so I refer you to that. But if you need those extra modes, it is possible in Movimot if you're in expert mode. We also have more sophisticated brake control where you can set the times. Also, you can activate that feature where the brake can release without a drive enable. This was available in easy mode as well, but you can see there's a parameter for it here in expert mode, and we know that because it's got the little I symbol next to it. Parameter group eight. You've seen this one already. This is where you switch between easy and expert mode, but you can also factory reset all the parameters back to the factory defaults. And when you go into expert mode, it's often a smart idea to do this, to reset it to the factory default setting. That way you start with a clean slate and you can go in and set all the parameters to just what you want. If you're using the RS-485 or field bus interface, then you might want to access these parameters. These set up RS-485 communications. If you're not using that, just leave them alone and everything will be fine. And then finally, you can set the pulse width modulation frequency to one of these standard choices. Parameter group 8 also contains what are called the fault responses. Now, there are two possible faults that can happen with a movie mod. External fault will only be available if you switch to the binary mode that includes the external fault sensor. If the fault sensor triggers by going low, in other words, going to the ground level, then the fault response is what the Movimot will do in response to that occurring. Motor overload is available in all modes, and that will be triggered if some kind of an overload condition happens, and you can set the response to that as well. Now, what do I mean by response? Well, that is simply what the Movimot does when that situation occurs. Now, there are multiple response levels and messages possible for each of these. External fault, you see, has quite a few. It actually has eight possible responses. You can tell it to do nothing. That's no response. It can simply send an error to MoviTools Motion Studio or the keypad if it's connected. It can do what's called an immediate stop. It can do a rapid stop. It can do an immediate stop or a rapid stop and send a warning, and it can also do a normal stop and either send a warning or go into a fault situation. So there are lots of possibilities here. Motor overload has fewer choices. Basically, it can do nothing, display an error, or do one of three different kinds of stops. Now, you may be wondering, what is the difference between the different types of stops? Remember, we did see a rapid stop parameter a few minutes ago. Well, let's talk about this. Movimot can stop itself in three different ways. It can do what's called an immediate stop. This is technically what we call an uncontrolled stop, means we don't know exactly how long it will take. And the reason it's uncontrolled is because when it occurs, the Movimot simply switches off the output transistors, it attempts to apply the brake if it's present on the motor. If it's not, however, the motor may coast. And it may coast a long time if it's got a hefty load attached to it because it will have a lot of momentum. That is why it's uncontrolled or unpredictable. Now, if there's a brake present, it probably will stop it relatively quickly. But be aware if there's no brake, it's kind of anybody's guess. So that is one response. And it is possible to set up the Movimot to do this if a fault occurs. Alternatively, you have the rapid stop. Now, this is a controlled stop, and the reason it's controlled is because the Movimot uses the ramp value you set up in parameter 136 to deliberately slow the motor down at the rate specified by that parameter. And once it is ramped to a stop, then it turns the output transistors off and applies the brake if present. The advantage to the rapid stop over immediate stop is it gives you a predictable stop time, which you can program by setting that parameter. And then finally, we have a normal stop. We've already been working with these. These two are controlled. The movie mod executes a normal stop every time you just disable the motor. In binary mode, for example, if you remove all the control signals, you'll get a normal stop. 
It goes with the standard ramp, which is either programmed by parameters or the T1 ramp dial, uses that ramp to slow down, stop the motor, then it cuts off the transistors and then it applies the brake. All right, so you've seen that one, but you can use any of these three as fault responses. So now that you understand that, I think it's time for a demonstration. Let me show you a few things on the Movimot and demonstrate how some of these parameters work. All right, well, we're ready to go and do some work with our Movimot. As you can see, I'm in MoviTools Motion Studio. I am connected to my Movimot by a USM21A USB adapter. I've scanned into my network, and you can see the Movimot is there. If you look in the lower left side of the screen under Network, you can see that it's been detected. So we're ready to go. And I have the parameter tree up here, so we're going to be spending a lot of time in it. The first thing we need to do is factory reset our Movimod and then change it from easy mode to expert mode. Factory resetting returns parameters to default values. I'm going to open up the main group 8 in the parameter tree and then I'm going to pick the subgroup 0. And this contains the parameters both for factory resetting the Movimod and also for changing from easy mode to expert mode. So to factory reset the Movimod, I go to parameter 802 and I change it to delivery state. And by the way, when you do this, you get no warning. MoviTools Motion Studio will not ask you, are you sure you want to do this? It will just do it. So here we go. All right, my Movimod is now wiped and returned to factory default. To change from easy mode to expert mode, we go down to parameter 805 and we just change it to expert. And there we go, we're now in expert mode. The first thing I want to do in expert mode is disable my mechanical controls. And to do that, I go to parameter group one, and then I pick subgroup zero, set point selection. And I have all my checkboxes here. Everyone I check is going to disable the corresponding mechanical controls. I'm going to disable all of these so that I have full parameter control. If I leave a mechanical control, then certain parameters will not be able to be changed. This, in a sense, gives me full expert mode because now everything is parameter based. So now we're ready to start making some changes. Let's go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we have lots of independent ramps here. So I'm going to go to subgroup three under parameter group one and pick speed ramps. And I'm going to change some of my ramps. Remember the up and down ramps give you independent control for normal speeding up and slowing down. Right now they're set to three seconds by default. I'm going to change the second one, the down ramp to five seconds. And by the way, let me remind you again, always hit enter after changing a parameter. Let me show you what happens if you don't hit enter. If you just click to another parameter, I'll go to the one below it. Notice it reverted back to three. The only way to change a parameter is to type it in and then hit enter. Otherwise, it won't stick. Also, I will point out that if you want to see the help screen for a parameter, click on it and then hit the F1 key on your keyboard and you'll get the help screen. Okay, so we've changed our down ramp to five seconds. We've left our up ramp at three. I'm going to leave my up down soft ramp at 10 seconds and I'm going to leave it switched off for the moment. Later on, we are going to go and look at our S ramps or our soft ramps, but we'll leave these as they are for now. I'm going to change my stop ramp or my rapid stop ramp as it's really called to 0.5 seconds. And let me just remind you, these times are for 50 hertz frequency changes. So if you want to work with speeds, you'll have to use that formula that we talked about several sessions ago to get the actual times you put in to get the desired acceleration and deceleration. All right, we've set our ramps. Let's set a few set points. We'll go to subgroup six for set points. These values correspond to what the F1 and the F2 dials would set, but we're going to key in some actual values here. And just to prove we can set oddball speeds if we want, I'm going to change my first speed from 1500 RPM to 1505 RPM. And I'm going to change my second speed to an even odder 632 RPM. That's just to show that we have fine control of these speeds. 
Notice as well, there are decimal values after that, so you can even go down to fractional RPMs, but we won't do that here. All right, so we've set our F1 and F2 speeds. I'm also going to set my fixed set points. These are the four set points that are possible in one of the alternative binary modes. I'll be demonstrating that, so let me just set all these speeds here. Remember with these, the sign is important because it indicates the direction of rotation. I'm going to change the first to 250 RPM. I'm going to change the second to minus 500. I'll change the third to minus 750 and the fourth to minus 1000. Minus signs will cause them to rotate counterclockwise. All right, we're now ready to go ahead and test our drive. The moment we're still in the standard binary mode, which means that we have the clockwise and counterclockwise digital inputs, and we have the F1 and the F2 digital input, which selects between speeds. So I'm going to fire up the Movimot, and you can see that all of this works. Of course, we're going to be using just the F1 and F2 speeds that we keyed in on this screen here. So we should get 1,505 RPM and 632. I'm going to open up one of my read-only parameter screens. I'm going to open up this one, subgroup zero, which shows the different parameters of the drive as it's running. This will let us confirm that our speeds work. All right, so I'm going to go to my control box here and run through a few tests. I will turn on clockwise to see if we get rotation at 1,505 RPM in the clockwise direction. And there we go. That appears to work. Also notice that our ramps obviously work because it did take a certain amount of time for that to accelerate up to that speed. I'm going to stop it now and go to the counterclockwise direction. Okay, and that ramp took about five seconds, so that's about what we'd expect. Let me go counterclockwise. And that appears to work as well. I'm going to switch to my slower speed, 632, by flipping the F1, F2 switch. I can do that while the drive's running. It should slow down to that speed. And it does. So everything appears to be working. All right, let's stop our drive. Now I'm going to change to one of the alternative binary modes so we can access the larger group of set points. To do that, I have to expand parameter group six and pick the binary input subgroup. And I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to pick this option here, configuration of fixed set point two, fixed set point one, enable and stop. This reassigns what the digital inputs do. The counterclockwise and F1, F2 inputs are going to provide the binary number that selects the speeds, and the clockwise input is simply my drive enable or my drive stop. Right now, all the switches are off, which means that the set point being selected is set point zero. If I turn on clockwise, we should immediately get rotation. So let's see if we get that. It should be 250 RPM in the clockwise direction. And I think that's what we're getting. That looks about 250 RPM. I'll stop my drive and I'll go ahead and pick one of my other speeds. I'll turn on the counterclockwise switch, which will give me a binary number of 01. And when we run the drive, we should now get a counterclockwise rotation of 500 RPM. Let's see if we see that. All right, definitely running faster. I'm now going to change to my next set point by turning counterclockwise off and F1, F2 on. And we're going now at 750 RPM. We can confirm that, by the way, by going to process values. You can see there it's 750 in the counterclockwise direction. Let's go to our last speed by turning both counterclockwise and F1, F2 on. That brings us up to 1,000 RPM. So there we go, four set points available to us. Let's stop our drive by removing enable. So there we go.
not too bad. Let's go back to our binary inputs and let's pick our next mode. We're going to pick the one that gives us the external fault input. So I'll pick my third binary mode. The clockwise switch enables or stops the drive. The counterclockwise switch simulates the fault sensor. And then the F1, the F2 selects the speed. Now, before we do anything further, I'm going to show you a feature of MobiTools Motion Studio that we're going to want. Go over to the MobiMod and right click on it and pick Show Online Unit Status. And that will bring up a little status window at the bottom here. Now it's going to disappear as soon as I move anywhere else. If I don't do this, I'm going to have to pick the little pin symbol here, and this will lock it to the bottom of my screen. This shows the status of my MobiMod. You notice right now it says it's not enabled, but it's also not in a fault condition. And then I have a reset button here. I can use this to clear faults if they occur, and we're about to produce some faults, so I want this screen on. I'm going to try to run my drive right now. We're back to just two speed set points. When we enable the drive, we should get the speeds in the parameters associated with F1 and F2. So I'm going to turn on the clockwise input to start the drive running. But nothing happened, and you may wonder why not. Well, the reason is because our external fault signal is an active low signal, and notice that switch is turned off. There's no checkbox here. When an active low signal is at the ground level or a very low voltage, it's signaling a fault. And my MobiMot, in fact, is faulted now. The indicator on top is red. And notice down here it says we have fault 26 external terminal fault. I need to turn that switch on to signal that nothing is wrong. So I need to switch my external fault switch on. And I need to now clear my fault. As soon as I do that, the drive starts running because I left my enable switch turned on. That is something that you should be aware of. When you clear a fault, the MobiMot will try to go back to doing what it was doing at the time of the fault, which could include running, and that could be dangerous. So before clearing a fault, always stop and ask yourself the question, could anything bad happen? And if it could, maybe you need to at least disable the drive to be safe. At any rate, this is a demo unit, so everything's okay. Our drive is running. Let me pick the other speed just to confirm it works. I'll turn the F1, F2 switch on. We get our slower speed. Everything's fine there. I'll go back to our faster speed now. And now I'm going to trip the external fault sensor by turning that switch off, and you'll see what happens. Notice again, we've got a fault message down here and the drive did ramp to a stop, but it ramped to a stop fairly slowly. That's because by default, it uses just the normal stop ramp, which in this case isn't very fast. So it's probably a good idea if you enable the external fault sensor to associate the fault with the rapid stop ramp. So let's do that. But the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my fault. I'm going to turn my fault switch back on. I'm also going to disable the drive so it doesn't start running immediately. And now I'll reset my fault. And we're going to go to parameter group 8, subgroup 3, fault responses. And you can see the external faults response is normal stop. I'm going to now change this to rapid stop with a fault message. And I'm going to fire up my drive again, trigger a fault, and you'll notice this time it should stop much quicker. Okay, we're up to speed. Let me trip my fault. And you notice that happened in about half a second, which is what we programmed in. Okay, so if you're going to use an external fault, you probably want to pick rapid stop just so you get a quicker stop. Let me clear everything out here. I'm going to turn the fault switch back on, disable the drive, and reset the fault. And I'm going to show you what an immediate stop looks like by changing the fault response to immediate stop. Now, my demo unit has a break, which means what will happen as soon as this fault is triggered, it's going to shut off the output transistors and slam on the brakes. So I should get a very quick stop. Let's see if that happens. Drives up to speed. And that gave us a very brisk stop. That is only because I had a break, however. 
if I did not have a brake on this drive, it could coast for a long time if it's got a big load connected to it. So immediate stop is usually not a bright thing to use if you don't have a brake, but if you do have a brake, you'll probably get a nice quick stop. All right, let's clear that fault out again. And I'll put this back on rapid stop. And I'm going to show you just one more thing and then we're finished with our demonstration. We've looked at how we can change the binary inputs to different modes. Let's take a look at the binary outputs. I'm going to open subgroup two of parameter group six, binary outputs. And you can see what this is, is the relay, the digital output. By default, it associates itself with the ready signal. That's what we saw in easy mode. So whenever the MovieMot's ready to run, the relay contacts will be closed. But we have lots of other choices here. For example, if I pick rotating field on, then those relay contacts will only close when the motor is starting to turn, because when the magnetic field starts turning, the motor will start turning almost immediately. So why don't you take a look at the light on my control box. You notice that it's off at the moment because the motor is not running. Let me start it up. And as soon as that field starts to turn, that light should turn on. So now we're looking at a different status signal than we were before. Let me stop the drive. You notice the light only goes off when the motor finishes the down ramp because that's when the magnetic field stops turning. Let's pick another status signal. I'll pick brake released. You can see the light again is off because the brake is applied at the moment, the motor's not running, but as soon as I start it, the brake will release and the light should turn on, indicating it's released. And it most certainly does. Let me now stop the drive again. And you notice that light's still on until the brake actually applies. And at that point, the signal goes off because the brake is no longer released. All right, so we have covered a lot of the major parameters, obviously not everything, but we've covered the most common ones and the ones you'll be using most often. All right, well, I hope you found that interesting and useful. I think it's time for a hands-on for you to apply what you've learned. So we're going to do another hands-on here. Let me give you some instructions, then I'm going to turn you loose on it, let you try it, and then I'll come back and demonstrate it. I would like you to start your MovieMod in expert mode. So you need to do this. You need to factory reset it and switch to expert mode. You need to disable all the mechanical controls, change to fixed setpoint binary mode, assign minus 150, positive 350, positive 900, and positive 1200 RPM to the fixed setpoints. Assign a 4 second up ramp and a 2 second down ramp for a 1200 RPM speed change. So you'll have to calculate those values. You should set the rapid stop ramp to a quarter of a second. And you should set the fault response for a motor overload to rapid stop. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and try to do that. And then come back and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, well, let me demonstrate how to do this and you can see if you did it correctly. So here we go. The first thing we have to do is calculate our ramp times before we can do anything. This is the equation I introduced a while back in an earlier session. Remember, we have a 1200 RPM speed change and we have an up acceleration time of four seconds, a down acceleration time of two seconds. My motor has four poles. Of course, if yours is different, then you'll need to take that into account but I'm going to do the calculation for a four pole motor. So I'm going to take my equation here. I'm going to plug in my values for my up acceleration time. I take four seconds times 6,000 divided by 1200 RPM times four poles, and that gives me a five second ramp time. I calculate my down ramp time using the same equation. The only thing that changes is two seconds instead of four. And when I run those numbers through, I get a two and a half second ramp down time. So we'll need to program those into the right parameters in order for our MovieMot to give us those ramps for 1200 RPM speed change. Let's go ahead now and set all the required parameters.
All right, we're back in Moby Tools Motion Studio, and we're going to now follow our instructions to do an expert mode setup. The first thing we have to do according to our instructions is factory default the unit and switch to expert mode. So I'm going to expand parameter group eight and pick subgroup zero. I'm now going to change factory setting to delivery state. That wipes my Moby Mot, returns it to the default settings. Now I change my startup mode from easy to expert. Once I've done that, I should disable my mechanical controls so I have full parameter based control. I'll expand parameter group one, pick subgroup zero, set point selection. I'll just go through and click all the checkboxes. And that disables all my mechanical controls. My instructions tell me that I should activate fixed setpoint binary mode. So I need to go to parameter group six and pick subgroup zero, binary inputs. And I'll pull my list down and pick my second choice. This will give me my four set points. And I need to associate some speeds with those set points. So I will go back to parameter group one, subgroup seven, fixed set points. And here are my fixed set points. I need to change them to minus 150, so I'll put a minus sign in there, not forgetting to hit enter. That will make it run counterclockwise. And then I change my other three to clockwise directions, 350, 900, and 1200. That will set up my set point speeds. Now I need to go and set my ramps, so I'll go to the speed ramps group here. And I'm using just my simple up down ramps, and I'm going to set these to my calculated value, not to the actual times that I specified, but my calculated times, because that's what will give me the right ramp for the speeds I've picked. I'm going to go ahead and set the first one to five seconds and the second to 2.5 seconds. That takes care of those two ramps. I also had to set the rapid stop ramp to a quarter of a second. So I'll change that to 0.25. And then lastly, I was told to set the fault response of the motor overload to rapid stop. So I go to parameter group eight, subgroup three, fault responses. And I go to the motor overload one, and this one happens by default to go to the rapid stop. So it's already set correctly. So that is all I have to do. Of course, I want to test my drive to make sure it works right. And I'm going to open up parameter group zero and pick process values here just so I can see what happens. I'm going to enable my drive and see if I get my speeds and directions that I expect and also if my ramps look right. All right, we'll start at our first set point, minus 150 RPM. We'll leave the two digital inputs that control that both off, which will give us set point zero. Here we go. All right, counterclockwise at 150 RPM. That's good. We reverse direction, clockwise at 350. Next speed. 900, final speed 1200 RPM, and we definitely did seem to speed up and slow down at about the rate specified by our ramps. Let's check our down ramp by disabling the drive. Okay, I think that worked. So it appears everything is working fine. And that is the end of session six. Hope you found that interesting and enjoyable. And now you realize how much more power is locked up inside your MoviMod. So maybe next time you get one of those really challenging applications, you'll take a look at MoviMod and actually say, yes, it can do more than easy mode. It can actually handle my application. In our next session, we're going to look at a special tool that's built into MoviTools Motion Studio that's helpful for diagnostics and debugging, as well as troubleshooting. It's called the Scope Tool. We'll be covering that next time. See you then.